G'day, today I'm going to be reviewing the DS1054Z oscilloscope from Rigol. This is a 50 megahertz four channel scope. Let's take a close look. Just taking a quick tour of the front and back before we power it on, we of course have our four channel input, enormous seven inch display, that's great to see. That's quite, quite a lot of screen real estate to work with. Menu buttons down the side. Uh, so there's menu buttons on the left, which means we're gonna have quite a lot of options available right at our fingertips from the get-go. And of course, the, the standard controls for a digital storage scope. Those, that's, that's a pretty common looking interface. Just on the top, of course, we have the carry handle. On the bottom, some fold-out footies, just to lift it off the bench a bit. And on the back, we have the you know usual power input, USB and LAN to get a remote connection to a computer and a trigger output, as well as a pass and fail output. So that'll, that'll be useful if you plan on doing any automated testing. And of course, in the box, you also get your four scope probes, as well as USB and power leads. So I've powered the scope on, that took about 25 seconds, pretty standard for a digital scope. And I've, while that was powering on, I broke out the function generator so that we can actually take some measurements. So I'll plug the function generator directly into channel one. And I've already set the probe multiplier to one times because we're not using the 10 times scope probe here, we're just using a direct connection. So we need that on one times. And if I bring that time in, yep, there's our two kilohertz sine wave, no worries. So we have our wave on the screen and we wanna take some measurements. You can see that we have our channel menu currently on the right hand side. This is like the context menu. So if I go to measure, it changes to the measure menu. That's, that's a pretty standard operation. But what I really like is down the left hand side, we have this, this dedicated menu for taking signal measurements. So straight away, we can decide we wanna measure the frequency. And once we press that, we get a box down the bottom that just gives us a direct readout of the frequency. So we can press that, and if we press it again, it tells us it's an ex it, the item already exists, so it's not gonna duplicate it, that's nice. Now, say we wanted to extract a little more data, we could bring up the, uh, on the right-hand side on the measure menu, we can bring up the statistic option. So if we enable that, we now have this frequency measurement is fleshed out a little bit uh, with a little bit more information, the current, the average, the max, and the min. So at the moment, of course, this is coming from a, a signal generator, so everything is reading bang on two kilohertz. Let's have a look at how some measurements can be taken. So we, of course, have the, the standard measurement menu. This, is, this looks like the, the interfacing menu that we were kind of, we were accessing the individual measurements on this side, so we can see them all at the same time and scroll up and down. And we're currently in the vertical menu, so I can move over to the horizontal menu as well, so we can look at some phase difference between two signals. Uh, if I go over to cursor, and we can turn cursor mode on and have a look at how that's handled. So I currently have a 100 kilohertz signal on the scope, and I'll just go into manual cursor mode and we'll see what's happening there. Okay, so yeah, just, just as you would expect, we have our floating box that shows our, our data between the cursors. So it shows the position of each cursor and also the differences between them. So we could, we could take a, uh, a difference in voltage measurement to say, I mean, while the scope could do it for us automatically, we can take a peak to peak voltage measurement. Here we've got a five volt different and that is, that checks out because we have a five volt peak to peak on the function generator. And just by pressing that cursor key again, we can cycle through different capture modes. We can bring up the uh, two XY modes. So we have a solid, two solid lines for XY and two dotted lines for XY. So we can actually now take some point measurements. So I can bring my solid line to the, to the bottom of this trough, cycle to the next and bring it to the top of this trough, at the top of this peak over here. And then if I press it again, Okay, so now we've gone to uh, a mode where we lock the two together and we can move our cursors A and B at the same time. And now I've gone back to the vertical. So if I want to move that horizontal, how might I do that? If I, uh, of course, I can select the, the horizontal mode now and now I've got cursors A and B so I can bring cursor A down to meet at that trough and bring cursor B up. So now I have full point data 
for both curses A and curses B for this trough and this peak. And then the differences in measurements are shown, of course, in this floating box. And very quickly, we'll just look at some of the utilities. So if we go over to the acquire menu, this is where we change things like how signals are acquired. This is the, the acquisition menu. So here we have important settings like anti-aliasing and also we can manually set the memory depth. So you might want to do this, I guess, because it changes the, the window time for a given signal. If you have maximum memory depth selected all the time, it takes a, a bit of time to throw that data back and forth. So you might only capture a signal here and then here and then here. Whereas if you set the memory depth to something lower, you can bring those visible windows closer together. So that's, it's nice that that's included. Um, we can go over to the storage menu, of course, uh, as a digital storage oscilloscope, the name implies that it can store data. So we can store things as uh, pictures with the PNG format and presumably other formats. But of course we have the option for Rigol's traces and waves. I think that's um, their proprietary format. So you view that with a, a free piece of software. But then of course you can go just straight down to a CSV file with raw data that you can then analyze with uh, Excel, MATLAB, Octave, whatever you like. The display menu, yeah, we just get like intensities and brightness and uh, display types, so vector and presumably raster. And the utility menu where we can change things like just, just how the scope works, so uh, sound feedback, language, what else have we got? Uh, yeah, there's the self-calibration mode and then just other various options. The 1054Z has what we would call deep memory. It has 12 meg as standard. And the depth of an oscilloscope's memory affects both how long it can capture for at a given uh, sample rate, but also how much you can essentially uh, zoom into a signal at a given sample rate. So just as an example, I've uh, generated a 20 megahertz signal on the function generator, and the scope is currently set up with a 100 microsecond time division. That means that the entire screen is only showing about 1.2 milliseconds. But 1.2 milliseconds versus 20 megahertz, these are, these are wildly different orders of magnitude. So if I capture a single, uh, a single sample, if I zoom out, you can see there's my sample. But if I uh, zoom in, so now the time division is going down and down. We're going down from, I think it was 100 microseconds before, now we're zooming into about 100 nanoseconds. Now if I bring the intensity up, you can see we can still recover the periodic waveform uh, zooming in from 100 microseconds to 100 nanoseconds. So we've been able to effectively jump down by three orders of magnitude in time. So just to reiterate, what we're looking at is actually a captured signal. I can remove the, the measurement uh, probe from the scope and you can see the waveform is still there. So this is a waveform that we captured in single shot mode and it's now saved in memory. So we can zoom in and we can, we can pan around, of course, by, by moving around, it's a periodic signal, so it all looks the same. But this is the benefit that deep memory gives you, is that you can, you can take a, uh, a reading of a low frequency signal, but then you can also choose to zoom in to see high frequency noise that might be superimposed upon that signal. There you have it, the Rigol DS1054Z. This is a, a great first scope. I mean, I can't believe that I'm saying that a, a four channel deep memory scope is entry level, but the, the 1000Z series that Rigol released really, really was a game changer for entry level scopes. I remember my first scope was only, I think, 10 megahertz two channel, and it was the equivalent price. And this is only talking like six or seven years ago. So, these, I mean, usually I would have recommended a four channel deep memory scope for like a really serious maker or in a shared lab environment. But now the price of these things is just that this, this would make an excellent first scope. If you have one of these scopes yourself and you'd like to share your thoughts, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section or in our forums. I'll catch you next time.